angry? I didn't join an elite super secret special forces black ops military assault team to spend the last five years in this stupid office talking about my dumb feelings. And I certainly didn't sign up to be the head judge of the barracks ball sack sweat stench competition. But that's just what I spent this morning and the better part of this afternoon doing. Recently, Jungle has gotten super into putting his hand down his pants and then smelling the ball sweat on his fingers to see what kind of funk he's working with. Then other guys on the team started doing it. Then everyone started doing it. Then they decided that they needed to have a contest, or rather a ball sweat pageant, where they raided and compared each other's nutsack odor. And since all these jack-offs are about as sharp as a bag of cotton balls shoved up a Build-A-Bear's butthole, they couldn't come up with a proper or fair judging criteria for the disgusting skunk nuts contest. So at 0700 this morning, they were beating down my office door, demanding that I help them set up the guidelines for the retarded disgusting thing, which at first I obviously refused to do until Jungle almost started crying. So then I quickly helped them put together a simple judging and scoring system and then told them to get the hell out of my office before I split all their heads open with a fire extinguisher. Now can you please send us someplace where I can kill bad guys in peace? Preferably a lot of them, preferably with my bare hands, and preferably in the next 20 minutes. It reeks like somebody shot a bucket of buttholes into a dead pig in here. I mean, even worse than it usually does. Problem solved, problem staying solved, range the way. Right, folks, always be doing all kind of creepy bullshit. Smell my balls contest? Who's got the stankiest fart contest? Guess whose butthole's on Snapchat contest? Y'all a bunch of sick motherfuckers. Too much goddamn free time on your damn hands. You stick one of your ball sack stankin' hankies in Snow's face, and I'll shoot you right in the dick. Stanky balls ain't nothing to joke about. And this is coming from a man who was issued a snowsuit as his only military uniform. Cheap ass motherfuckers. You think they could issue a brother a pair of cargo shorts or something? But hell nah. They be trying to kill snow with heat exhaustion. But snow ain't having it. I'm staying hydrated as a mug up in here, using that gold bond powder. Dusting up my prize jewels and keeping my shit in check. Tacky ass motherfuckers taking pride in having a case of that dumpster dick. Crackly ass funk foot toe jam eating fungus crotch motherfuckers. You need to go wash yourself and stop playing around before you give yourself a case of athlete's dick. And that's the truth. Shit. If you don't get these clowns out of these barracks soon, somebody is going to die. Ball stench and farting contests? Big deal, that shit's amateur league. These losers are taking scumbagism to an all new level with their so-called unjerkable porn tournaments. Let me bring you up to speed. These cretins are taking turns looking up the weirdest, ugliest, most disgusting, most disturbing, least erotic pornography they can find. And then betting money against each other as to whether they'll be able to masturbate and achieve climax while watching it. It's gotten so bad they've even got sophisticated betting brackets like time to orgasm, amount of bodily product emitted, distance traveled by release specimen, and so on. It's absolutely disgusting, unhygienic, and more than just a little bit gay. You gotta wear shower shoes everywhere you go or else risk slipping and breaking your neck on a puddle of sad tadpole grease. Now please, go out there and tell them to send us somewhere where people will shoot at us and try to kill us. It'd be a lot more admirable to die in battle than from medical complications brought on by a collapsed vas deferens from overuse. And for the love of God, please tell Supply to send up a couple dozen pallets of fresh socks before we ship out. There's not a clean one left in the place. Or at least not one you could put on without slicing your ankle open on a chunk of dried crotch, loogie. God help us. 68 Whiskey out. I don't know why anyone would complain about being stuck here in AFT state-of-the-art headquarters. These pansies don't know how good they got it compared to being stationed somewhere like 29 Palms. I mean, it's like a luxury resort around here. AM and FM radio. Actual seats and no fewer than half the toilets in the commode and honest to goodness whirlpool for loosening up sore muscles after extensive training exercises. Sure, the whirlpool's heater's broke, the plaster's chipped, the entire bottom's mostly exposed rebar and broken Miller High Life bottles, and the filter's teeming with families of highly poisonous and aggressive water moccasins. But that just makes sure it doesn't get used by pussies. Because everyone knows that a chlorine-drenched water moccasin is nature's no wimps allowed sign. Now, as far as these complaints about jerking off contests go, you're never gonna beat a marine when it comes to hitchhiking to the moon during uncomfortable circumstances. A marine can beat off any time, any place, no matter how dangerous, distracting, or disgusted. Case in point, 
Here are just a few places this marine has milked the old sploot snake. During firefights, during mortar attacks, multiple times at senior citizen mud wrestling night at Goody's Tavern, and one time during a filming of a jihadi beheading video. Yep, I was taken captive on a foot patrol, and these sons of bitches decided they were gonna chop off my head on Betamax. So I told them, give me one last request, and I started beating my meat right then and there. And the shockwave from my climax blew the limbs and heads off several of my captors and their goats! Needless to say, that is one video I can watch again and again, and it never gets old! How do I submit something like that to America's Funniest Home Videos? I'm pretty sure it's funny enough to win me that 10 grand. I can't wait to meet Bob Saget in person! Oh, and one more thing! Go fuck yourself! Yeah, man. I won those ball stench contests fair and square. My junk always smells April fresh as fuck, because I like to keep one of them little green air freshener trees in my shorts at all times. You never know when shit's going to jump off with a big titty motel housekeeping lady who's down to get down on your skin, Snorkel. And, as far as this top secret overseas combat mission is concerned, let's get it on. Send me into the fight, because Jungle Recon is good to go. I'm a terrorist's worst nightmare. Chisel good looks, sturdy demeanor, and I know all kinds of kung fu and special weapons tactics and shit. I'll duct tape a flamethrower onto a machine gun all futuristic like that chick in that Aliens movie. Stand back, Newt. I gotta set some motherfuckers on fire. Here, let me jump into this robot forklift contraption suit and punch this son of a bitch in the head 50 or 60 times. Tables, ladders, and chairs style. Jungle's gonna shove your ass into an airlock and launch your communist alien symbiote butt into outer space. I'm the deadliest SOB you'll ever meet. Plus, look at this goddamn mustache, man. It ain't no skinny wannabe hipster scruff. This is some manly, A1 rated bare skin rug for your upper lip, next level face foliage right here. Hell, if it was a scratch and sniff sticker, it would smell like equal parts confidence, freedom, success, Jack Daniels, Copenhagen, non-dairy protein shake mix, cause I'm lactose intolerant, cop car fuel, cause I got pulled over last night and decided to siphon a little gas from the trooper's cruiser while he was running my plates, vanilla stripper butt cheek glitter, beef jerky, dollar store energy drinks, nicotine chewing gum, and the pubic regions of thousands of supermodels, female heads of state, NFL cheerleaders, roller derby chicks, First class section airline stewardesses, chicks from Cirque du Soleil that spin around on ropes held by their clamped up buttholes, WWE divas, flow from those car insurance commercials, every woman who has ever appeared on a hot butts in yoga pants internet photo list, every blonde, brunette, and even ginger who have graced the pages of the lingerie section of the Sears Montgomery Wards and JCPenney catalogs since 1982, the bicycle seats of several prominent female triathletes from countries foreign and domestic, and of course, the titty sweat of countless lap dancers from Tallahassee, Florida to Juneau, Alaska. Because it's not only like a mustache with titties, it's also a mustache that smells like titties. Hell yeah! I was hired by the Defense Department to provide top-of-the-line weapons and training on how to use these weapons to this team. I was not hired to have moist jock straps shot at my head or have the 50-inch flat-screen television monitor in my office used to display interracial obese midget amputee porn for jack-off contests. Frankly, I've been all over the world and I've worked with some pretty fucked up people. But these idiots take the cake. Then, they bored a hole in the side of that cake and took turns having sex with it. It was a birthday cake for my assistant. And, boy, was he depressed about it. If these drooling buffoons don't cut it out with their boner shenanigans, I swear to God I'll quit. I am here to fulfill my duty and collect a healthy government subsidized payment for doing so. Not to dodge jism stained undergarments and suffer chemical butthole warfare in the mess hall and break room. If you need me, I'll be in my office, disinfecting it and regretting every decision in my life that brought me back here to work with these troglodytes. And also, trying to forget ever seeing that interracial obese midget amputee porn they were projecting on the wall of one of the racquetball courts in the parking lot outside the rec center last night. Which, even if your head isn't encased in a giant chrome helmet thingy, is something that you really can't unsee. Fucking assholes. I was perfectly happy back home running my prehistoric animal petting zoo and family fan boat tours business. Sure, 
the constant litigation by crybabies who claimed it was my fault that their loved ones were eaten or partially maimed by my menagerie of alligators, crocodiles, monitor lizards, skinks, gila monsters, snakes, poisonous frogs, salamanders, and newts was a little annoying. But it all comes with the territory when you're running your own unlicensed extreme reptile and amphibian fun park. Is it my fault that while your child was posing for a photo with one of our numerous 32-foot reticulated pythons, that she was swallowed whole in front of her grandparents and two younger siblings? That's just what these creatures do. They strangle and consume rodents and small children whole. Look, it says it right there on the sign. Our snakes will eat you, and we will laugh. Hey, if you don't want your kid eaten by a snake, maybe don't bring him to a snake park. I'm just putting that out there. That's bad parenting. You gotta keep an eye on those kids. Why don't you go to SeaWorld, watch some uh, whales get tortured, huh? Get your rocks off, get your jollies, huh? Ugh, hypocrites. They want the snakes, but they don't want their children eaten. I can't give you both. The same goes for the dozens of people blinded every week by the bevy of black neck spitting cobras in our aptly named Black Neck Spitting Cobra Funtrarium. Instead of renting a pair of our very reasonably priced protective eye goggles, they insist on entering barefaced, thinking they'll be able to dodge the high-velocity streams of eye-debilitating fluids emitted by these creatures. What they don't take into account is that these spitting cobras deliver their poison in a geometrically oval-shaped cloud, choosing rapid head and neck movements that anticipate which direction their quarry will turn in before they even emit their venom. It's like some people have never seen an episode of National Geographic Explorer in their life. Do your research, people! Or don't be so cheap and cough up the $24.99 for a pair of our, again, very reasonably priced rental safety goggles. I tell you, sometimes running an off-the-grid unsanctioned wild animal park can be almost more trouble than it's worth. And with that, I'd like to reluctantly say that I'm glad to be back on the team. Or whatever this is. Oh, uh, by the way, quick note, everybody. I may or may not have misplaced a few of my saw scale vipers in the showers earlier this morning. So you guys might want to take to bathing and showering in Ugg boots, you know, for your protection until they show back up. Be careful, those snakes will kill you. Oh, looky, looky, who comes crawling back? What? You realized you could not manage without the help of the greatest shirtless mad scientist in the world? Of course not. And, since you asked, yes, all of the medical clinics I had opened since leaving the AFT team have been closed due to claims that I was experimenting on human test subjects in an unethical manner. But that is only because I was! What fun is it splicing the genes of a man with those of a rabid ocelot and a radioactive squid if you get his permission first to do it? No fun at all! And you should Sure can't ask my half-rabbit ocelot, half-radioactive squid man test subject, because he died 15 minutes after the procedure took place. But let's not cry over spilled ocelot squid man blood, for I have moved on to my next and greatest scientific conquest yet, a super soldier serum. What? No, I didn't steal this idea from a comic book superhero movie and or its <clears throat> spin-offs. This is my original idea. Me, Dr. Molesto. The serum not only makes you grow taller, but also gives you full lush head of hair and strong, confident 16-hour erection. Well, yes, it's sort of just boner pills that helps you grow hair. So what? Who wouldn't want that? Hey, stop that, or I'll splice your genes with those of an incontinent raccoon and an albino jellyfish. Then who will be laughing, Mr. Funny Guy? Me, Dr. Molesto! That Dr. Molesto creeps me the F out. Following me around, giving me porno mags, trying to get me to jerk off somewhere that he can watch so he can collect a sample of my DNA to use in that new super soldier serum he keeps talking about? I don't blame him, though. 
I'm the perfect specimen to base a super soldier serum off of. But my spank juice ain't for scientific uses. It's for pleasure purposes only. That's why I've been cranking it in really stealthy and secretive places as of late. And I've been disposing of the evidence in an even more secretive manner. Yep, I've been shooting my pickle potion into that magical interdimensional trunk that Professor Mesmero keeps in his closet. I figure old Molesto can't steal my man batter if it's transported to a completely different realm of the multiverse. And also, the inside of that box has a really nice velvety lining. Kind of feels like sticking your weenie into the side of one of them fancy pleather couches they got at the Sears Home Furnishing Center, which I may or may not have done. Long story short, I rule it beating off. Hell yeah. No, I don't have proof that Jungle's the one who's been committing the crime of Onan in my cabinet of curiosities, but I'm certain he's the one who's been doing it, and I've had enough. I came back here under the auspices that this team needed the world's greatest living mentalist to help plan their upcoming assault on a heavily fortified enemy position. Someone who could look into the future and pull forth its secrets, allowing preparation for any contingency before it's even happened. I did not come here to bend the laws of time and space with my mind, just to be questioned constantly by these idiots as to whether the chicks they are dating are going to get fat in the next ten years, or if chicks that have dumped them ten years previous are fat now. Why would I waste my gifts and talents combing the spectral plane for fat chicks? That makes no sense. Also, just to be clear, I... Professor Mesmero, all-seeing, all-knowing seer of the unseen and unknowable! Do not use my powers to locate or discern any of the following. Lost car keys. Forgotten email passwords yours or a girlfriend's. Whether or not that rash is just a rash, or will actually sprout into a full-blown STD. If manually debasing yourself with a dandruff shampoo immediately after a one-night stand will prevent you from contracting herpes, HPV, HIV, or a UTI. Exotic dancers' real-life names and cellular telephone numbers. If Marky Mark could have actually prevented 9-11. Lotto numbers, horse race winners, or who will be victorious in next year's Super Bowl. I communicate with forces not of this dimension and unreckonable powers your puny minds couldn't possibly comprehend. So no. I can't find you the best deals on air travel to Orlando. I'm busy. Busy cleaning the interior lining of my cabinet of interdimensional curiosities with simple green. For the third time this week. God damn it. We don't need a freaking mad scientist, reptile handler, mentalist, or metal-headed dong gargler screwing up this team any more than it already is. I've already got my hands full dealing with the regular guy's BS, let alone these rejects from Jerk Off Misfit Island. Our orders just came in, and it looks like we're flying out first thing in the morning to some crap forsaken abandoned medieval compound deep in the Afghan mountains that a new global terrorist organization has been working out of. Or at least that's what the intel guys tell us. Who knows? Place will probably have been abandoned since before Osama was jerking off to cowboy porn. What I do know is that with our new baby at home, I can't wait to go out into deployment to some place where people will be shooting at me so I can finally get a decent night's sleep for once. That adorable little motherfucker is up every two hours screaming and going ape shit and there's nothing you can do to calm him down once he gets going. Last night it got so bad that me and my old lady had to load him into the minivan and drive around the block at four o'clock in the morning until the little bag of lungs and projectile diarrhea fell asleep. I've gotten more sleep on three-day ambushes than I have in the entire last six months with this kid. And also, I'm constantly covered in baby shit. It's like the little bastard flings it on me when I'm not looking just because he thinks it's funny. And I know, I know, having a new baby is a miracle and it's the greatest thing and the greatest joy of every second of every day, blah, 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 blah. But I can totally see why God or whoever the fuck made them made them cute. Because until they get bigger, can take care of themselves and stop shooting pee, poop, and barf at you like some kind of deranged midget hobo, you really want to kill them sometimes. It's fucked up, but it's true. So bring on motherfucking Afghanistan. It'll be a fucking cakewalk compared to all the baby brain damage I've been suffering lately. Problem solved, problem staying solved. Rangers lead the way. If there's one thing this Marine loves, it's going out on deployment. It's like you get to do all the awesome shit you see in movies and video games, but in real life and way louder. Plus, you get to kill motherfuckers, which fucking rules. If there's anything better in life, then it's gotta be some kind of magical waterbed made out of fleshlights with a built-in wild turkey dispenser and pull-up bar. 
but I'm pretty sure modern science is nowhere near making something that badass. So, overseas murder vacations it is. Now, here's a to-do list of absolute musts for any armed service member about to ship out. Buy a new car, but be sure not to leave it with a family member or girlfriend. Crash that shit or fuck it up real bad jumping something Dukes of Hazard style. And don't be an idiot and buy some fancy expensive sports car. Buy six or seven really cheap, shitty cars instead. That way, you can fuck a different one up every day of the week. You have not lived until you've launched a 97 Tercel 350 feet into a cornfield while listening to Slayer's War Ensemble on repeat at maximum volume. Next, don't marry a stripper. That would be stupid and irresponsible. Instead, marry five or six strippers. That way, you have them duke it out with each other to prove their love and to see which one gets signed up under your tri-care. Not only that, but if you're clever, you can talk a few of them into some freaky lesbo three, four, and five ways on Skype. Then, you can charge admission to your fellow devil dogs to watch while you're downrange. You'll be running your own virtual strip club while overseas protecting freedom and sending bad guys to that city full of ugly virgins up in the sky. And finally, my last pre-deployment tip. Knock some bitches up before you leave. And not just one or two of them. You want to impregnate at least a dozen or so. That way, if you bite the big one in combat, you'll have an entire brood of little nipple chewers back home to carry on your warrior bloodline. And if and when you do come back home, you'll have a shitload of little devil pups to regale with your stories of combat and conquest in foreign lands. And you could get them to help you out around the house with chores such as taking out the garbage, polishing your muff chucks, and of course, cleaning your guns. Now don't forget, before you deploy, it's cheap cars, loose women, and blowing your load in as many chicks as possible. Anything less would be un-American. Now good luck and happy hunting. Oh, and one more thing. Go fuck yourself. Nobody was more excited than me that we were gonna be actually deploying somewhere to drop hammers on some dickheads. Because one, I drive a tank and love to blow shit up and run shit over. And two, I'm really fucking good at both. And they're fun as hell. However, I was less than happy about the new boot Russian driver they stuck me with. Soviet defector who came over here for an international training course and then refused to leave. He tried to defect the normal way, but since there hasn't been a cold war since Different Strokes was on the air, the State Department refused his request. So then he went to Plan B. He refiled his defectation paperwork, or whatever the hell you call the form he had to fill out. He said he faced political persecution due to sexual orientation. Yeah, he claimed to be gay and said that the Russian government and military were punishing him for it and that if he went back to Russia, he'd be in great physical danger, which is pretty sad and fucked up, or at least it would be if it were true. Yeah, he's not gay. In fact, I've never met a bigger poon hound in all my life. Ever since he got here, he's done nothing but watch porn on his crappy laptop and rave about the speedy Wi-Fi in the barracks. I guess in Russia, most people are still using dial-up. And when he's not busy cranking his pocket Kremlin to co-ads, he won't shut the fuck up about all the murderous bears in Russia that are constantly eating people. And how you can't even walk down the street without carrying two chainsaws duct taped to a 2x4 to fight them off with. Man, Russia sounds like a shithole. Oh well. Let's get downrange and drop some freedom on some motherfuckers. This tanker's hungry for scumbag bots. I no see what the big deal is. Russia crappy, cold, and depressing. US? Awesome! Warm and fun. Russian tank driver, live here now. I don't care if other soldiers make fun for saying on paperwork that I am homosexual in order for to get political asylum. I am here. Other losers who not smart enough to check box I am gay are not. That makes me the big wiener. And uh, speaking of big wieners, I am enjoying very much this USA's uh, high-speed Wi-Fi everywhere you go, and it's most enjoyable uh, internet pornography. In Russia, internet very slow, like worse than dial-up. Over there, people still jerking it to JPEG, not even animated GIF. GIF too big, take too long to download. Here, you can get full streaming 1080p. 
for free in a Starbucks. The women in American U.S. pornography are much happier and prettier and uh, so much less making with the crying and pleading for their lives than in Russian skin flick movie. In the Russian porno movie, the women are all sad and bruised up and have usually been kidnapped and forced into making sex movie tapes by the Russian mafia. American porno movie lady have high heel shoes, lipstick, nail polish, less visible scars, and fewer prison tattoos tattoos of their crying children on breasts and buttocks. And during the sex time of the movie, there's no crying or pleading, oh please, I'll do whatever you want, just don't drown my tiny brother Yosef in the frozen river, I beg you. Not to be crude, but women with no makeup or good shoes crying about abducted family member while doing the reverse cowgirl, very much, how you say, to be killing your boner, no? Also, I was kicked out of Starbucks earlier today for making happy surprise in hand. If you're gonna pack for a deployment, make sure you do it the right way. Bring twice as much water and four times as many socks as you think you'll need. And yes, you're gonna want to pack pornography. Preferably on a laptop, tablet, or hard disk that one of your battle buddies has sworn to erase in the case you become captured or killed in action. But only if you're captured or killed in action. He better be sure. Look, there's no need for your mama and Aunt Gertrude to have to stomach the 1,700 hours of cross-eyed albino midget amputee porn you brought to get you through a year at some godforsaken COP in the middle of buttfuck nowhere. However, if you're like me and have no problem entrusting your life to your battle buddies in a firefight, but don't trust any of them outside of combat to be able to do anything more complicated than chew gum without peeing their pants, you might have a problem. And you're probably going to want to safeguard your porn stash and make it nearly impossible to find in the event your buddy drops the ball. So, here's Doc's advice. Put all your porn files inside folders within folders within folders with very boring, mundane, and off-putting sounding folder names. Here are a few suggested by AFT fans themselves to help get you started. MSDS Sheets Taxes, 2011 to 2014. Naked pictures of Hillary Clinton. Color Guard Drill Manual. Totally not porn. Whatever that free U2 album was called. Computer Diagnostics and Reports. Colonoscopy Images, 2013. Up Close Pictures of Dog Shit Collection. Reenlistment Paperwork. Favorite Bible Verses. Quarantined X64. Archived 5988 2004 to 2006. Blue Waffles. A Study of Light, Hue, and Shadows. Windows Vista Backup. Nickelback Greatest Hits Volume 1, Betty White Twerk Videos, DTMS Access Roster, Algebra 2 Homework, Delete If I'm Dead But Not If I'm Just Wounded, Proper PT Belt Usage Guide Notes, Dong Pictures, Vegan Recipes, Read Me, Disney Princess Cosplay Ideas, Home Gardening Videos, Limp Biscuit Unplugged, Virus Folder, Class 3 Dental List, and DOS Games. Now, let's get in this bird, head down range, and put some lead into some soon-to-be-dead goat smokers. And hey, how about we change those socks? And drink some goddamn water while you're at it. Not just rip it. 68 Whiskey out. I'm all set to head out on this mission, because I was smart enough to take care of all, if not most, of the things on my personal bucket list before I left the States. Including doing it with three chicks at once, four times in one night, and only two of them being fat. Mission accomplished. Except for the fat part. Bigger chicks are more open-minded about that kind of stuff. So sometimes, you gotta roll with the punches. Donkey punches, that is. Making out with, and then busting a nut on the Statue of Liberty's tits. But, I assure you, only in the most classy and patriotic manner possible. Hell, I even sprung for a $75 power washing of those beautiful patriotic green metal fun muffins the next morning. Going on The Price is Right and spinning the Showcase Showdown wheel with my rock hard pecker and coming up one dollar exactly. Twice, Drew Carey said it was the most impressed and least impressed he'd ever been with a contestant on the show. And he knows what he's talking about because he wears glasses. Now, I'm off to achieve the final triumph on my list before we head into battle. I, Jungle Recon, am going to appear on and win an episode of that Japanese karaoke handjob game show that I've seen on the internet with the promised grand prize of one million dollars in high quality, fully lifelike sex dolls. And that's why I pulled the emergency fire alarm on the transport plane just as we were passing into Japanese airspace. I wasn't going to let anything stop me from achieving my dream of getting a hando while belting out some sweet Skinner lyrics live on a foreign TV show. It's like I always say, get out there and follow your dreams. And also, don't be afraid to get whacked off on Japanese basic cable sometime if you can swing it. Hell yeah!
Yes, I know Jungle pulled the emergency fire alarm on the cargo plane I was piloting on our way to Afghanistan. No, I'm not going to report it. And no, it's not because I'm a super cool chick. It's more like I was relieved to touch down in Yakota and get a break from these idiots for a few hours. All they've been doing since they boarded was wrestling, yelling, farting on each other, watching porno movies at full volume on their phones and laptops, and calling me stewardess and asking me when they can expect cocktail service. Motherfucker! I have shot down more MIGs in one afternoon than the total number of overweight, divorced soccer moms these jokers have gotten rejected by at our local TGI Friday's happy hour in the past five years. Anyway, once we landed and I had a chance to clear the fuselage of their man stench with some Febreze, I was feeling in a better mood. So I decided to help them out with Jungle's little plan to get on Japanese TV. I had an ex-boyfriend who works in Navy Public and Media Affairs forge some press badges for the team to help them get onto the studio lot where that handjob karaoke game show was filmed, which I can't believe worked because the morons insisted on having the stupidest and most obnoxious fake names ever used on their credentials. But I guess the Japanese didn't find it strange that Jack Mihoff, Huge e. Boner, IP in your butt, Dick Ozinia, and Professor Leonard Von Ticklepuss III decided to visit their TV studio all on the same day. For our next mission, can we get some type of barrier or fart-proof sliding limo partition installed? I swear to God, my entire flight suit reeks of pull my finger. I spent the first eight hours of our flight with tampons up my nose just to block out the smell. And yes, one of those assholes took a pic and put it on Instagram. Men are children. A Marine is prepared for any situation that comes his way. And there is no better friend to have than a Marine to help you get out of any conundrum that you encounter while on overseas or on R&R. Such as negotiating a cheaper price from a hooker because she happens to be a midget, has too many unattractive C-section scars, is missing a limb, is missing more than two limbs, or might be a dude. Babysitting a single mother hooker's kid while you get a blowjob on the back of a rented moped. Resuscitating an unconscious hooker. Determining if if an unconscious hooker might actually be a dead hooker. Burying a dead hooker. But not the same one that had the kid from earlier in the list. Because that situation would be sad as shit. Now, instead of a full frontal attack, these Nancy boys wanted to get all sneaky and try to stealth their way into that Japanese singing while you get whacked off game show studio. And it backfired. And something really gross and terrible happened. And... They deserved it, because if you're going to face an enemy, you face that enemy head on. Stealth is for pussies. Walk tall, carry a big stick, and keep the Jaeger Nog flowing. That's the only way to achieve true victory. And if you're going to hit me up to help you bury a dead hooker, don't forget, it's B-Y-O-S. Bring your own shovel. A couple cases of beer won't hurt either. I'm a Marine, not a Home Depot lawn garden aisle oh and one more thing go fuck yourself you can't rush perfection any eod guy will tell you that and if you do well then there are going to be problems i got the team into the tv studio just like i promised but i'm neither a gps unit nor a mobile on the spot translating device i mean give me 15 minutes and i could easily build both out of a busted speak and spell third generation ipod nano and a set of children's binoculars but oh no everyone's always in a hurry around here so you get what you get and what Jungle got was led into the wrong soundstage. And instead of the karaoke handjob sing-along game show, he stumbled across one that had a little, uh, more intense level of gameplay. Because Sumo Super Braille Butthole Surprise Fun Show is just as challenging as it sounds, and just as gross. It's a game show where blindfolded contestants attempt to read Braille messages written in white rice off the butt cheeks of naked sumo wrestlers with their faces. And these sumo wrestlers have all just been fed 100 180 cubic liters of spicy eel chili each. The goal of the show is to decipher the messages before the sumos shit themselves onto and into the contestants' faces, or not, depending on whether you're rooting for the contestants or the downfall of humanity as we know it. Of course, Jungle can neither read Japanese nor Braille, let alone Japanese Braille written in rice stuck to a bunch of sweaty guys' butt cheeks. So, we had a problem. Now, I'm good at dealing with things that go boom, but this potentially explosive situation was clearly above and beyond my pay grade. So, we we called in Doc to work a little of his magic and hope for the best. And by the best, of course, I mean that Jungle ended up getting b-hole fire hosed by one of those sumo dudes full of chili. I mean, talk Christmas in July on that one.
I'm here to keep my team members' guts in their bodies, not the guts or gut juices of foreign nationals on game show sets. But I know how bad Jungle wanted to win that million dollars in sex dolls, so I helped him out. I mean, hell, a million dollars in sex dolls? Who wouldn't want to see that? So I whipped up a batch of Imodium Cottage Cheese Gunpowder Smoothies for our sumo buddies. Stopped them up quicker than Rosie O'Donnell's ankle trying to fit through a hula hoop. At EOD's request, we had our signals guy download an app on his phone that could translate the Japanese butt cheek braille on the fly from his position hanging upside down in a nearby lighting rig. And with the help of that app, Jungle got first place on the show without receiving the sumo butt bukkake to the mustache that he undoubtedly deserved. We hustled him out of the studio before they started the bonus round, because we did not want to press our luck. By the time we got to the karaoke handjob game show set, we were all in for a very unpleasant surprise. Now, normally, the show features contestants getting their crank yanked by a pair of hot 20-year-old Japanese cosmetology students. You've seen it, don't pretend you haven't. But today was a special episode being taped for the show's seniors week. Yep. Jungle Recon was going to get jerked off by a series of Japanese women in their 60s, 70s, and 80s if we wanted to win that mountain of sex dolls. I handed him a bottle of water, a pair of fresh socks, and wished him the best of luck. Because, boy, was he going to need it. Man, Japanese people are even more fucked up than white folks are. At least when it comes to TV shows. Who wants to fart on a midget? Who wants to fuck a sea urchin? Who wants to stop an oscillating fan with their nutsack? And that's just the children's Saturday morning TV lineup. The shows on late night are even more fucked up. Like this one Jungle got himself mixed up in. Singing karaoke songs while getting beat off by creepy old Japanese ladies. What kind of TV show is that? One that's supposed to give you nightmares? Worst part is, the entire goal of the show was not to ejaculate. Which would be easy for any normal human being. But goddamn Jungle is into weird kinky shit like that. So Doc had to shoot his dong up with a local anesthetic between each round just to keep him from busting a nut all over those blue head geisha hoes who were probably hot back in World War II when they was 50. Now Jungle made it all the way to sudden death double jeopardy lightning round, which is a lot more literal than it sounds. It had Jungle hanging upside down, butt naked over a jacuzzi full of cobras, being whacked off by a trio of invalid grannies wearing Alex Trebek Halloween masks and taser in his nutsack. If that crazy ass cracker hadn't had so much experience with situations situations like this back home on his Craigslist adventures, he would have been a goner. But Jungle pulled through and won the whole thing singing Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer without spilling one drop of his sad sloppy ass extra chromosome having demon seed. Except the prize package wasn't exactly what it was supposed to be. Not even close. He won a million dollars in sex dolls all right. Rubber Japanese dude sex dolls. Japanese people? Bitch, you crazy. Shit. Those sneaky Japanese sons of bitches took advantage of me. This is like a full-on Pearl Harbor 2, and not the Michael Bay movie, with stunning visual effects, compelling storyline, and Oscar-worthy performances from both Ben Affleck and Kate Beckinsale. I'm talking sneak attack here, but I ain't the kind of guy to get all sandy vag and hold a grudge, so I'm going to get my little blue frozen princess on and let it go. When life hands you lemons, cook that shit up in your basement or stockade toilet and make some hard lemonade. Then take a couple of painkillers, call some hookers from a back page ad in one of the local free weekly newspapers, then siphon some gas out of those hookers' cars while they're knocking on the door of the wrong motel room that you gave them, and then drive to the nearest roller rink, steal a pair of roller skates, then get back into your car, drive to the nearest bowling alley, slap on those skates, and show those fuckers what old Jungle likes to call a rolling turkey. You know, epic shit, man. Complicated epic shit. That Tokyo Game Show gave me my million dollars in sex dolls. However, they neglected to inform me that said sex dolls would in fact be of the male and not the female persuasion. I was the proud new owner of a million dollars in life-size silicone fuckboy dolls. Like a batch of real dolls, but the kind that Jared from Subway probably used to beat off to and get all improper with up in his sad sandwich mansion. But, like I said, jungle ain't a poor sport. I had those sons of bitches crated up and loaded into our cargo plane and set off for Afghanistan to fuck shit up. I was thinking, maybe I could set up a booth and rent them out on Man Love Thursdays. Make a little cash, because in case nobody done told you, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm like a 90s rap video, because I'm all about bitches and money. And occasionally, I wear biker shorts, because they make my junk look real good. Hell yeah! We land in Afghanistan, and right away I tell you, I hate this fucking place. Crappy food, women covered up like tarp on Winnebago, cold, Dust and dirt get into everything. No Wi-Fi, no good internet porno. 
make Russian tankers boner weep tears of sadness instead of normal tears of exploding joy. That is uh, American expression, no? Oh, oh, worst part about Afghanistan is that it's no good for tanks. Rocks and hills and narrow valleys everywhere. Constant make to throw off tank track and get stuck. No good. Plus, entire country is like one big ambush point. Mortar teams hiding in hills, RPG attackers hiding in bushes, a guy with AK-47 up in tree waiting to shoot when you get out of tank to make the poop. Read book The Bear Went Over the Mountain. It have all the crappy details of when Soviet Union fought here in 1980s. Better music back then, but same shitty country. Also, nobody tell this Russian that team was going to be attacked by robot spiders. Big surprise that one was. Our Afghan guides were torn to pieces in seconds. Very much blood and guts flying everywhere. Very reminiscent of Russian bear attacks back home. I stay in tank. Eat MRE borscht. Try to find Wi-Fi signal for the porno. Figure, if going to die, should try to die happy. <sighs> but instead, tank commander yell at me and tell me to help load up heat rounds to shoot at spider robots, which is way less fun. <sighs> Afghanistan. I hate that fucking place. Don't threaten me with Article 15 because I give zero fucks anymore. First Command sends us on this bullshit wild goose chase mission just to get us out of their hair. Then Stanley goes MIA on some sort of secret mission he can't talk about and misses our flight for Afghanistan. Then jungle on those tarred holes nearly scare our pilot and flight crew to death with our goddamn fire alarm at 30,000 feet stunt just to get the plane to make an emergency landing in Tokyo so that idiot and his cronies could sneak into a Japanese TV studio and try and win a forklift full of sex dolls and his weight in ramen noodles. It's like, dude, when are we gonna finally get to fight and kill motherfuckers for a change? I swear to God, most of the time this job feels like I'm body surfing in an ocean of retard drool, constantly getting sucked down by an undertow of useless skating cock shitters. And for the record, I'm glad Jungle got whacked off by those Yoda looking dust queefers. And I'm double mother monkey fucking glad that that moron got stuck with a batch of rubber dong dude dolls instead of the prize he thought he was getting. Jungle is about half a Thai ladyboy butt hair's breath from getting himself kicked off his team for good. He better step it the fuck up when we get to Afghanistan or else that motherfucker's gonna be walking home, dragging a metric ton of rubber fuckboy dolls behind him. Problem solved, problem staying solved. Rangers lead the way. I don't want to hear anyone bitching about the inconveniences of fighting in Afghanistan and getting caught in an ambush. Afghanistan is one of the most miserable places on earth. So obviously, it's the only place this marine would like to be. Slugging it out with dickheads and handing out justice with a K-bar, M4, and lip full of Copenhagen. Just like Jesus did. And ambushes are fucking awesome! They're the universe's way of keeping you on your toes and telling you, Hey, fuck monkey, keep your eyes and ears open because the Grim Reaper's lurking around every corner! And, much like the protagonist in that 1976 Blue Oyster cult classic, you should not fear the motherfucking Reaper! You need to make him your bitch! And keep that bony, cloak-wearing, sickle-wielded son of a bitch busier than a retard in a booger factory by sending him a constant stream of bad guys, terrorists, and dipshits to take to the great beyond! When other pussies around you are yelling, HOLY SHIT! I DON'T WANNA DIE! You look them right in the eye and scream, WE'RE NOT THE ONES THAT ARE GONNA BE DOING THE DIET TODAY! MORE COWBELL, MOTHERFUCKER! Every marine alive is a walking, talking, scumbag, stalking symphony of death, and don't you forget it! Oh, and one more thing, GO FUCK YOURSELF! I was lucky enough to capture one of those robot spiders that came pouring out of the hillside right after the attack started. Our marine had grabbed it by the head and put it into a noogie-style chokehold, and then kept pulling off each one of its legs, one by one, and smacking the thing in the head, yelling, Stop hitting yourself, robot spider! Stop hitting yourself! Which was one of the most stupid and dangerous things I've ever seen on the battlefield. But also pretty goddamn entertaining. Marines aren't right in the head, but boy are they good at smashing the shit out of murder 
murdery things, I performed a quick field autopsy and discovered that not only were these things six feet tall, made almost completely out of Kevlar-infused, double-reinforced hyper-titanium, armed with twin 50mm machine guns, rocket and grenade launchers, and state-of-the-art targeting systems, but they were also manufactured by a company called the Varjak Associates Group, which is the same company that has been providing all of the team's meals, logistical support, and even some of our weapons and vehicles since the new office manager returned last month. But none of the stuff we've been getting has been nearly as advanced as these robot killing machines were. This motherfucker has been sandbagging us and selling the good shit to the highest bidder behind our backs. I would have fragged his ass right then and there if the coward hadn't detonated a smoke grenade, ran back to our cargo plane and took off in it right after the shooting started. And also, I hate to say it, but we all would have been toast for sure if Jungle and Snow hadn't pulled off that little maneuver of theirs. I swear to God. I never would have thought the two of them had it in them. I mean, I'm sure Jungle's got a lot of stuff floating around inside of them, but I didn't think courage and split-second decision-making were some of them. Good for us. Oh, so now all of this is my fault? Listen, I'm just a guy trying to make a living the best way I know how. Whether it be assisting this team with its logistical and supply chain operations, or selling deadly two-meter tall mechanical murder drones to the highest bidding despots, criminal madmen, or angry jihadists in far-flung parts of the world. Don't put me on trial. Put the whole American capitalistic system on trial. If you dare, I didn't think so. If you guys would spend a little more money and not be such tightwads, I could get you some primo fighting gear. We're talking fully armored exosuits, amphibious jet glider dune buggies, machine guns with flamethrowers bolted to the ends. You know, all kinds of sweet science fiction type futuristic shit. But you don't spend the cash, and your enemies do. So you get what you get. Which in this case is attacked by a brigade of deadly robot spiders. As a member of a team that was facing overwhelming amounts of firepower, enemy numbers, and such a huge deficit in weapon technology in this ambush, what did you expect me to do? Stand around and wait to get killed like the rest of you idiots? No, I did what any rational, intelligent, and sane person would do in that situation. I ran to our cargo transport, stole the keys, and flew away in it. Don't blame me! Blame whoever forgot to lock the cockpit door and the laws of aerodynamics. They are both clearly at fault in this situation. I am merely the victim here. Duh. Oh, Jesus Christ. I told those assholes not to hire that guy back. Not only is he a total lowlife scumbag fuck and as untrustworthy as they come, but he's also a fucking coward. He thinks I'm pissed because he sold whoever was trying to kill us, those robot spiders? I'm pissed because I'm almost a thousand percent certain that he tipped off whoever the fuck attacked us that we were coming in the first place. We weren't on the ground more than five minutes before those things started pouring out of the moon dust and attacking the shit out of us. Coincidence? I fucking doubt it. And then that wannabe Tin Man dipshit steals our plane and takes the rest of his misfits, Dr. Molesto, the alligator dipshit, and Professor Mysterio with him. Those guys are all in cahoots as far as I'm concerned. And the next time they see me, it's gonna be looking up from under my boot in their throat as Snow shoots each of them in their tiny coward dicks with a Mossberg. This is utter bullshit. And yes, Jungle did technically save our asses during the initial assault with his asinine plan. But you can ask him for the details because the inbred halfwit refuses to shut the fuck up about it. I can't believe we we are all nearly killed because we are screwed over by a guy whose car we once sprayed flaming dicks all over. Dude, AFT's HR department definitely needs to update its screening process. Problem solved, problem staying solved. Rangers lead the way. Yeah, buddy, I saved all their asses from those robot spider sons of bitches. Hell, if it weren't for old jungle, them boys would have been turned into meat soup. I mean, Marine was doing a pretty good job beating some of them up, but he's only one man. And one man can only pull off the legs and genitals of so many robot spiders at one time. And there were hundreds of them. So I knew I had to act fast. I ran to the back of our transport plane and unhooked the cargo netting on all the crates holding my million dollars in sex dolls that I won on that Japanese game show. A game show hosted by liars who made it sound like I'd be winning sex dolls that did not come complete with 8 inch penises and supple fully posable nut sacks. But that's besides the point. Next, me and Snow set up a makeshift trebuchet catapult device using the stretch Armstrong like material from the severed dongs of said sex dolls. Then we cover the suckers in the lifetime supply of sexual lubrication oils that I 
had also won, and we lit them on fire and flung them at the oncoming army of robot spiders. It was just flaming, exploding fuckboy dolls as far as the eye could see. A haunting, yet strangely beautiful sight to behold. Now, I was thinking I was probably going to be pretty busy when we got home. You know, giving interviews to the news media, riding around in the backs of convertibles and parades, collecting medals from elected officials and dignitaries and whatnot, getting multiple blowjobs a day from grateful jazzercise instructors and female mud wrestlers. But fate had something else in mind, and it was the next morning that we woke up in our foxholes and faced the biggest challenge we'd ever met. Well, if you don't count the one time in Singapore when I ran out on a $17,000 bar tab at the four floors of whores and had to escape from the local authorities on a stolen Segway scooter and ended up riding naked and backwards on the expressway at four o'clock in the morning high on what I thought were magic mushrooms, but turned out to be expired well tranquilizers. So it was my life's second greatest challenge of all time. Jungle don't pay for no hand job from a dude, no matter how small and soft his hands are. I got principles, man. Hell yeah. So, yeah, Jungle's little sex doll rubber dong slingshot maneuver turned the tide of the initial battle. However, we were a long way from winning this war against an unknown enemy who wasn't afraid to use unconventional tactics. So that night at Chow, everyone was pretty shaken up. Especially when they found out we'd be making an assault on the enemy's suspected base of operations the next morning. Everyone was certain that the attack was going to be a guaranteed suicide mission. Lucky for them, Doc is always here with A-plus tips for suicide missions. Tip number one, borrow 20 bucks off someone. I mean, shit, it's only 20 bucks. It's not going to kill them to loan it to you. What kind of cheapskate's going to turn you down? Tip number two, once you get the first 20, go around to the other guys in platoon and borrow 20 bucks from each of them as well. But do it like one at a time, individually, as not to raise suspicion. Be a little sneaky if you have to. Now here's the payoff. You go into your big suicide mission battle. If you die, fuck it. You don't have to pay any of those assholes back and you already have sent the money back home stuffed up a teddy bear's ass. By the way, you need a teddy bear and medium flat rate UPS shipping box for this part of the plan. Now. If you don't die, here's where it gets good. You and your squad mates just faced a huge, near-death, life-altering ordeal. What asshole in their right mind is going to be hitting you up for that 20 bucks you borrowed? Let alone remember they loaned it to you. Nobody. See, you just made yourself a few hundred bucks with little to no work. Besides getting shot at and nearly killed, which was going to happen anyway. Now get out of here and get rich. And change your socks. And drink some water. And, oh yeah, loan me 20 bucks real quick. I'm good for it. 68 Whiskey out. The next morning, we roll up on the compound we're supposed to attack, and it looked like something straight out of the History Channel or a bad movie starring The Rock as some shirtless prehistoric god of push-ups or something. It was like a fortress, but also like a castle, but also kind of like a temple. It was just huge and creepy looking, and I had a bad feeling about all of it. So obviously, I stayed in the tank, because when shit gets hairy, that's what you do if you want to live. You stay in a fucking tank. As soon as we get within a thousand feet of the front gate, some crazy horn starts blowing, and the earth starts shaking, and the entire front of this compound's wall split open. And that's when I saw it. The single most goddamn frightening thing I've ever laid my eyes on. A hot pink, 100 foot tall, armored vagina advancing toward us on massive 30 foot wide tank treads, rising out of a huge, bottomless crater just below the compound's facade. And it was covered with those robot spider things from the day before. Because it turns out those weren't spiders. They were robotic pubic lice created especially for the world's largest and deadliest combat vagina. It was right then and there that I stopped and kissed every single dirty picture on the inside of my tank turret goodbye. Because I was sure that this big... Nasty, rusty hoo-ha was gonna be the end of me and the rest of the AFT team. Curtains by Beef Curtain. Oh, the irony. There isn't a single piece of poontang so beat up, heavily armored, covered in high caliber weaponry, armed with explosive ordnance, and protected by titanium robot pubic lice on this planet that's going to scare away any real marine, let alone this one. The bigger they come, the harder they fall. And that goes for street hookers, shots of whiskey, grizzly bears wearing boxing gloves that you face in unsanctioned cage matches just off of I-95, 
Live and Cable News Anchorman who refuse to admit that General James Mad Dog Mattis and the ghost of Chesty fucking Puller are the only presidential and vice presidential ticket that should ever matter in any election year in any country ever. Now, I looked up and saw that gaping corrugated maw of death coming right at me and my battle buddies. And I said, no siree, you bloodthirsty tetanus inducing sausage wallet. This will not stand. Then I grabbed my trusty muff chucks and spun them around at a dizzying speed like Thor does in them Avengers movies with his big old hammer. But in a less gay and homoerotic manner. Because I'm a fucking marine, not a pansy viking demigod. The whirlwind my muff chucks created lifted me up in a tiny tornado and hurled me straight into the bulging ironclad clitoris protruded from the top of vagina tanks flapping and gnashing labia majora and minora. And when I got there, I whacked the son of a bitch as hard as I could. Partly to see if I could kill it, and partly to see if I could make it come. Because if a marine can't kill it or make it come, it probably doesn't exist. Unfortunately, the latter was the case, and she turned out to be a squirter. And boy, did she squirt. I was covered head to toe in a thick, sticky, stinky goo that reminded me of motor oil mixed with fish guts and a hint of herbal essence of shampoo. And I was immediately incapacitated and also had a little bit of a weird boner going on as well. I'll tell you this, devil dogs, all seem to surely be lost, but a marine never gives up. Not even when he's about to be crushed to death by a killer 250-ton sideways saddlebag. Because when life hands you lemons that immediately end up being crushed by a huge armored death vagina, you tell life, go fuck yourself! All is never surely lost, you big bunch of babies. Boo hoo hoo! A big scary robot vagina shot orgasm goo all over me! Whatever shall I do? Maybe try manning the fuck up. You want to see something truly terrifying? Take a listen to the robocalls my ex-wife's divorce attorney sends whenever she's trying to get an increase in her alimony payments. EOD guys aren't just trained in stopping things from blowing up. A lot of what we do involves blowing shit that blows other shit up. Usually in new and inventive ways, with whatever minimal equipment and resources we have at our disposal. Shit. You give me 15 minutes, a roll of 100 mile an hour tape, some tin foil, the contents of half a dozen flashlight batteries, and the innards of a PlayStation 2 console, and I'll convert a Scud into a fully functioning Tomahawk cruise missile right on the spot. I found some cover and plopped down with a few sets of the remote controls, servos, and internal wiring from some of Jungle's sex doll projectiles from the battle the day before. I combined those parts with a couple quarts of canteen water that I swindled off of Doc. Then, I put all the stuff together inside the inner hole of a large vacuum sealed coffee air pot with a couple of c4 blasting caps and detonators stuck on the ends and voila a portable four kiloton thermonuclear fusion bomb yep you're welcome i'm that awesome oh and then the only problem was figuring out who was going to deliver the thing because it was definitely going to be a one-way trip fire in the hole Asking Snow if he'd be so kind as to deliver an improvised nuclear bomb to a hundred foot tall, oversized monster truck pussy gone wrong? Bitch, you crazy! Snow ain't no dummy, and he sure as hell ain't gonna get chomped up or blown to smithereens just because you crackers was too lazy to come up with some better way to defeat this freaky thing. Shit. It's a known fact that black people are always the first ones to die in these type of situations. Just look at the movies. Apocalypse Now. First guys to die on that swift boat? Two black dudes, racist. Full metal jacket, first dude to get killed by that sniper hole. A black dude named Eight Ball, double racist. Aliens, first platoon member to bite the big one. A black dude named Frost, triple racist. And the list goes on and on. Navy Seals, future TV president of the United States. Dennis Haysbert, first one to die on the team. Motherfucker was also the first to get shot up in the movie Heat. Ain't that some shit. Red Dawn, first person killed. The cool black high school teacher, Mr. Teasdale. Gremlins, another brother educating and lifting up young minds. Mr. Hansen is the first one to taste that don't feed them after midnight fury. The Shining, Scatman Crothers, axe to the chest. Look out, bitch. Unforgiven, Morgan Freeman, first one of the heroes to die. 
bitch, you can't kill Batman's best friend. 300, Black Messenger just doing his job delivering an old time email to Sparta. Kick to the bottom of a well. X-Men first class. Oh, hey, you the first black X-Men? Well then you the first dead X-Man. Rest in peace, Darwin, which is some bullshit. And those white nerdy motherfuckers gave him some lame ass powers too. Deep Blue Sea, Samuel L. Jackson is the first one to get eaten by that big ass great white shark. Even though you know black folks don't do no scuba diving. Racist and culturally inaccurate. And finally, in the original Karate Kid, the first Cobra Kai to get beaten in the All Valley Tournament, a black dude, Daniel LaRusso, you headband wearing wax on wax off racist motherfucker. I think this more than proves why Snow was a little trepidatious about volunteering to get his ass barbecued up in that rusty coochie jaws of death. Dumbass motherfuckers, you better watch yourselves. Shit. So there we were, about to meet our maker and be ground into pulpy discharge by a 10-story armored yeast infection on tank treads. Jungle was out of fuck dolls to catapult, our marine was knocked out and covered in gash goop, and our EOD guy had built a makeshift nuke that nobody wanted to deploy. And it had a good chance of vaporizing us all if someone did. It was a dark moment for the team. And right then, things got even darker. Literally. Our entire team was engulfed in a huge looming shadow from something falling overhead. A humongous object hurtling down upon us from the heavens like a butt plug shot from the sphincter of Zeus himself. And then, right before it squashed us all like so many ants, a parachute deployed from the top and retro rockets fired underneath. And it landed safely and gently about 300 meters northeast of our position. It turned out to be some kind of weird shipping container like the kinds you see in ports or on the deck of merchant ships. Several tense moments passed and then one of the doors blew off the side and then shit got really weird. Out of the dust and darkness within burst Stanley the Honey Badger, hauling ass in a custom combat motorcycle with twin Gatling gun sidecars. And behind him shot out a flying squirrel wearing a jetpack firing a saw machine gun. And behind the squirrel flew out a porcupine wielding a 50 caliber sniper rifle and piloting an attack gyrocopter. And behind the porcupine came an armadillo with a bazooka on his shoulder driving a mini tank. And behind the armadillo came a wombat wearing no fewer than two dozen knives, swords, and ninja weapons right in an armor-plated ATV. And behind the wombat was an aardvark firing a submachine gun in each hand and steering a tricked-out stealth dune buggy with his snout. Our backup had arrived, and it was Stanley the Honey Badger and the Furious Five. And yes, Furious was spelled with two R's like the word furry, which doesn't make complete sense because one of them was an armadillo and armadillos don't even have fur, but whatever. We were happy to see them and could use as much extra firepower as we could get. And those little bastards immediately began laying down a stream of hatred and ultra violence like you've never seen. Stanley and the Five definitely helped turn the tide of the battle towards our favor, but we still had to figure out what to do about that giant robot cum dumpster raining fire and metal and bullshit down on us. Stanley rode up next to me and EOD, took one look at the mini nuke, and you knew exactly what he was going to do. Without hesitation, he hoisted it onto his little badger back and gunned his bike right towards the humongous lumbering murder vag. He hit a button on his handlebars that initiated a jet turbine on the back of his bike and launched him into the air off a of berm in a badass Knight Rider-esque turbo boost maneuver. He timed it perfectly and flew right into the heart of that iron monostat guzzling piece of shit between its snapping and flapping lips. He must have set off EOD's mini nuke somewhere inside because what happened next was like something I had never seen before. There was a blinding flash of light followed by a shockwave that sent out a visible rumbling tsunami of dust that went all the way to outer Mongolia and beyond. A split second later, a spinning vortex appeared that pulled all the light and dust back into the center of it and then disappeared into a speck smaller than a pinprick. And then there was nothing at all, just silence. And the team and I looked around and all of the robot spiders we'd been fighting had been sucked into the wormhole or whatever the hell that thing had created and they were gone. And so was the giant robot vagina thingy. And so was Stanley. Talk about fucked up shit. We hoofed it back to our staging base and tried to figure out our next move. I wasn't leaving Afghanistan until I had answers or my best friend back. Stanley had just saved all of our lives, and we were more than happy to put them right back on the line to save his. Problem solved, problem staying solved. Rangers lead the way.